Hi, my name is Cindy Rang. I'm Brianna Moskis, and today is Fabric Chat. Good morning. Hi. <laughs> so we're still talking about clothes. Yeah. Still trying to, uh, uh, Pa and I went to uh, Moses Lake on Saturday? Was that the day that we mm -hmm. went? We had to go get a couple of things and um, thought, oh, we would stop. And there is some of that kind of shopping in Moses Lake, which is 20 miles from us. What is Moses mm -hmm. Lake? About 17,000 population, so you can find some shopping. There's no such thing as maternity sections in any of the mm -hmm. department stores. No. We looked, and Pa mm -hmm. was not liking it at first, but then he was on a mission. It's like, okay, fine. I think he, I don't know what he thought, that he's looking through women's clothes. <laughs> He kind of didn't want to do it. But then it's like, okay, I'm, I'll yeah. help you look. And um, there was no such thing. No, and even if there is, like, sometimes there's a tiny little section of maternity clothes, but they're all, like, size zero and size one. It's like, obviously, no one pregnant is not outside looking for maternity clothes. Yeah, because you can wear normal clothes if you're a size yeah, one. Yeah, if you're any buddy, you're probably on bed rest by now. Because <laughs> <laughs> you don't have enough meat on them yeah. balls. <laughs> Carry this <laughs> baby. <laughs> So yeah, so I am wearing though uh, today, you'll see them tonight, I'm wearing my jeans, the ones I got, I was telling you last week from Amazon. Oh yeah! So I am wearing them, um, they don't have they front do have pockets, panel. which I mean nuts, but women in front pockets, I mean it's a thing. It's nobody, I don't know why someone thought we needed pockets, just to fit change. Yeah. But someone thought that. <laughs> um, so yeah, but these are the ones that have, they just don't, the elastic bit doesn't just high enough, I mm. feel like. but. Well, I saw these things and I did order them. Uh, it was on Facebook, so I never know if Facebook shopping is real or what you're going to get, but, you know, anyway. What they were, it was the weirdest thing. It's like a skirt, mm -hmm. and so what it is is it had elastic around the top, and then it was kind of this pretty, like, lacy bottom. So what you could do is you could take, like, your normal shirt that you wished was longer, and then you just put this little oh, thing. And then and it, has, it, so it has a little... In it. And oh. so it looks like you have this layered... Sure, something cute. Yeah, so you can kind of wear your normal things and you just have these weird little things that you pull up over your tummy yeah. to hang. I don't know. Anyway, or I ordered some and we'll <laughs> see, see what they it look works. like. So, I don't know. They they seem to be clever. Yeah. Because I think that's what's happening is people are thinking, oh, I'll just, you know, why buy all of these extra clothes? I'll just wear my mm -hmm. regular clothes, but... Yeah. And when but we were, right, the regular clothes don't, fit. don't work. I mean, even if you add, like, you can do, like, the buttonhole elastic that we mm -hmm. have and, you know, do it so that you can have, like, these little stretchy bits between the buckle of your pants and where they close. But it still doesn't work the That's same way. And when I was pregnant with Wyatt, I did spend the 60 to $75 on maternity clothes thinking, well, I mean, he's not going to be my only one. And, you know, I would, you know, use them over time. And I did. And I was the same, luckily the same kind of size. So I didn't have to figure out how mm -hmm. to lose weight while I was trying to be pregnant or anything like that. I just maintained my size. And it was really good, but then after Harper, I don't know, we moved. You just, I get rid of all of it. Way. Oh, well, who would have thought that you can't find those? Yeah, and you no. can for the most part, not locally. I mean, there's not something you can take into the dressing room, we try on. Yeah. It's all online shopping, which is, I think, hard for me. I feel like I'm a quite the hourglass Close. shape that it doesn't work right, and it's just a pain in the butt. And for me, it's like, okay, for my last child, do I really want to spend $60 that I'm going to wear for three months? It might be worth it about all my complaints. I think in but terms of <laughs> comfort. Well, because now I'm like obsessed with it too. Because to, now that you're like, looking for they're hard to I find. know, I know. And today I have on tight pants. <laughs> and it's like, I may die. <laughs> I, why did I put these pants? I was cold this morning. And so I don't know why That's I was cold. It's that despair. weird time. Yeah, now it's that like really hot. Now changing. I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah, but, um, but yeah, so I have on tight pants. <laughs> and I feel like I'm going to die. <laughs> and I don't have and so not for any good reason. Reason. No, 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 it's just because I've not been eating right. And <laughs> and uh, they're a little tight. And I, and I kind of thought when I put them on, I thought, oh, these are a little tight. And I thought, well, that's what you get. 
that's what you get. You're gonna have to be uncomfortable, and you're gonna have to put down that that because uh, it's Halloween candy time. <laughs> oh, I know. And you guys are city <laughs> ah, folk now. I know. It's you're gonna so, have trick or treaters. I know. We have to. It's just too easy to grab just a little yeah. Butterfinger, and mm, you know, and four Butterfingers later, it's like, dang it, why yeah. did I do that? Yeah. So anyway, so I thought I would, you know, punish myself with tight <laughs> pants and. I'm really just punishing everyone else with my grumpiness and, <laughs> and thinking about poor you. <laughs> it's no punishment to me. Have me another butterfinger. <laughs> oh, I'm going to look for some stretchy pants for me. Too. <laughs> no. no kidding. Can't find any. So, anyway. Um, all right. Well, we'll keep looking and we'll see. But you'll have to show us your, your pants. And, yes. Anyway, the the things we have to go through. Um, so this week is kind of a fun week, and it's a busy week. Um, let's see. You got the video up for our yeah. retreat. Yeah. So what happens at one of our retreats? We finally we I think we talked about it. We've later. been talking about it for a while. So I finally got everything edited for the video that we did out in the retreat center when we had an actual retreat out there. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of fun. Lots of show and tell. Like I watched it and was like, oh, this is this is cool. It's one of those like inspiration videos. If you just wanna. Yeah feel inspired to get into your sewing room, whether it's because you need to clean it before you can sew or because you need inspired to put a border on this last quilt so you can move on to the next project. Yeah. So it's really fun and you get to meet a lot of our, you know, friends and new friends mm -hmm. and it's really fun. It's kind of fun. I never really thought about this before um, because Cheryl, um, who arrived last night, she says, well, what do you do with the retreat center when you guys aren't having one? And I never thought about that, that people might not understand that, but the retreat center um, you know, it's right there. Uh, I think it is difficult to understand what the compound looks like, really. But um, but I live there. There's bungalows there that were built in 1903. Mm -hmm. And then there's the condos that are, what, about three years old. And then there's this great big, huge event center. And that's where we all sew in there. We all set up. And that's what you see on the video is the event center. Well, we host, what, six... I think it's six. six retreats per year, and next year it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to hire, uh, not hire, um, add a couple of extra ones and move some around a little bit. But, mm -hmm. but we host six or so per year where um, just come and hang out, and we yeah. lead the whole thing, and we have a chef who cooks for you, and we have excursions for you, and we have just a fantastic yeah. time. And you meet. You meet new friends that will become your lifelong friends. It's funny that you just become super, super yeah. good buddies. Um, but the rest of the time when we're not there, other guilds, other people come. Mm -hmm. Other friends. Other friends. So oftentimes it's guilds or groups, you know, people who, oh, we sew together once a month at the church or we sew together, you know, once mm -hmm. a month we rotate to people's houses or whatever and they just want to get away for a quilting vacation. So that's who's out there most of the time. And yeah. by most of the time, it's every other weekend. We are full. Um, and, and so people email me and will say, mm -hmm. you know, do you have something that's coming up? And sometimes people want to move around a little bit or sometimes there's holidays or, you know, so we can kind of either get you on a waiting list or get you in. But, um, other people have asked, um, uh, how to register because there's no way to do that. That's true. We don't have a spot where you can just click on the link and purchase Book the your weekend retreat. that you want. Book mm -hmm. your retreat. And the reason that you can't do that is because you have to be vetted. <laughs> I have to know who you are. Um, and you she have to be. a little bit. Yes. <laughs> yes. There can be no weddings, no uh, family reunions, no class reunions, no yes. anything. Um, and you'll see why when you come out. I mean, mm -hmm. there's, I think it, the number is 154 quilts that are, you know, throughout, yeah. including three quilts that are over a hundred years old. Um, the wedding quilt that I featured in mm -hmm. my Every Quilt Has a Story, we have a, an old, um, expensive teacup, um, collection, collection there. out there, mm -hmm. all kinds of things. Um, um, hand crocheted, um, tablecloths that my grandmother made. Um, so all kinds of things that Definitely. my treasures yeah are all out there for you guys to enjoy. It's definitely dedicated for us Women. quilters. Yeah, and people who are going to appreciate yeah. the teacup collection and yeah. um, are going to appreciate the crocheted things and the wedding quilt. Yeah. And, you know, a family reunion and it's just no. maybe not very many quilters, they might not realize, yeah, you no. really can't touch that. <laughs> no, you can't touch it. <laughs> you can admire it, but 
don't, I know you can't snuggle with it. That's right. That's right. It's not for a picnic in the park. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, so that's why I think it's, uh, we don't often talk about the retreat center when, you know, we're doing this. And so people don't always understand what it is, but that, that is what it is. And then the other thing is that most of the time when people do the retreats, they have the event center and the four condos, which each have um, four twin size beds in them. And that leaves the bungalows empty. And so the bungalows, if you guys email me and say, hey, my husband and I are going to drive up from, you know, Southern Oregon or, you know, from the coast or from California, yeah. that's where we put you up. Um, you get to stay right there in one of the bungalows. And so that's what that's what goes on the rest of the time. But, but anyway, um, so it'll be good for you to see um, the, the inspiration. Yeah. And yeah, what happens that's at cool. a retreat. So, uh, and that was the one from sunny days yes. and so it was hot 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 yeah and it was a lot so of beginners lot. so it was really yeah. cool so if you're a new quilter too or maybe you haven't done a quilt yet and you just need to get in there um they do they do two different quilts in that video and they're both Wind drifter mm -hmm, and triple star. triple star and you see them and none of them look alike uh -uh. um a lot of them got done I think almost everybody finished. I think everybody left. finished, and I it think was too hot. To everybody, I think there were two people that were super shy. Yeah, two people didn't two want. People. But you could still see their progress and their quilt. So it's really really cool. So definitely, yeah. And maybe we'll be that. able to take some um, some footage this week because that's what's happening this week too. Is this week is our machine embroidery yeah. retreat, and this is the one that. Brianna really pretty much does the whole thing. Um, I am not a machine embroiderer. I do have a machine that will do it, but um, she just appreciates it. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, <laughs> when she makes things, it's like, oh, that's so cute. That's so cute. I love it. Love it. Love it. I love what it looks yeah. like. Um, but I, I just don't know that I have the brain capacity to learn one more thing. <laughs> and I think, I think because of her oh squirrel moment, I think she would be that machine embroiderer would. who would be infixed on watching her machine. Yes, just stare at it. Tiki, 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 tiki. It's like you've wasted two I, hours watching I this would. bad boy work. Why I you could have been doing yeah. anything else? Yeah, I yeah, I've kind of resisted. At some point, I might. Have it to is learn really to do cool it. to watch for sure. Maybe that's what I can do is just prop the camera up to watch someone's stitching because it is really cool to watch if you've mm -hmm. never seen it and not sure what how it works. But um, it is pretty cool. It's a very loud retreat because everybody's machine is running, doing its thing. It's mm -hmm. all running on its own and cutting mm -hmm. thread and they're changing threads and doing it all over again. So it is a loud one. Um, and we do it in the late, early, late fall, early fall, whatever, um, because it is cooler because with all of those machines running, yeah. everybody's got an iron on because they have two tables. So of course they might be sewn on something else while their machine is working out. So they might have two machines set up. Plus and an iron. iron. We cook ourselves. So we tell everybody, um, dress for um, very warm weather, mm -hmm. bring layers, because of course everyone's thermostat is different. Mm -hmm. And it's easier to essentially add layers because the hot ladies can, you can only take off so many clothes yes. before you make someone uncomfortable. So. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. And we try to stagger them so the, you know, the warm blooded get closer to the window and the cool yeah. blooded, they're more in the middle to the kitchen side. So it is quite an art we've figured out. Kind of yeah. like making Where to roommates. Sit everybody. How to yes. sit everybody at a retreat. But. Yes. So Some, yeah. somebody was telling me that, I can't remember who, I just heard this yesterday, uh, that they're part of a machine embroidery group and they're called the SOBs. Yes. Sweaty old broads. Yeah. I know. <laughs> you totally get that. Yeah, it's yeah. hot, man. Yeah, yeah. The whole new meeting for a hot shop for quilters. Yeah. Let's get those yeah. embroidery machines working. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Well, this one will be really fun. And um, But what's, what's odd about this one is almost every employee that works here has a long arm and a, embroidery. an embroidery machine. Mm -hmm. um, because of course we're quilters and that's what we do. So what happens is Brianna is teaching it and everyone is out there taking it. Yeah. And so you would think we would do like some weekend shop totally off subject. We talk about doing that all the time. Yeah. Uh, us just quilting. We, we, we even that. scheduled it for August, remember? And oh, yeah, and then something happened. Something happened. Yeah, yeah. we, we talk about all of us just getting together to sew. And 
You'd think it'd be easier than it is. You would think so, that we could do that. But yeah, so instead, everybody is out taking the embroidery retreat, <laughs> which leaves just me and Marge. Yeah. And so Marge, it's going to be just the two of us. And then we have um, Margaret is going to come up. And I wonder if they met Margaret. Um, did she do one of the box openings when we were in the Mediterranean? You I think know, she I might know. have. Margaret is from, I can never remember if she's from New Zealand or Australia. I think New Zealand. And um, I love her accent. Um, and so she's going to come. She is, I shouldn't say just a quilter. She's, she's a quilter. She doesn't work here. But mm -hmm. she knows her way around the quilt shop. And she knows how to cut fabric. And she's just a lot of fun. So Just an extra um, body to help yeah, out. Yeah, it's just so. going to be, I think on Saturday, <laughs> it's just going to be her and I. So. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. Um, so it'll be fun. I'll be able to be out there um, at the retreat in the evenings for dinner and to see what everybody yeah. is doing. But the rest of the time, we're going to be we're gonna yeah, be it's, working here. It's going to be crazy here. This will yeah, be the first one that, that you, yeah. That we're not together. Mm -hmm. I know. I'm a little nervous about it. <laughs> Because I'm kind of your support person. I know. <laughs> and it's funny because we were talking about this because we um, we have always finished each other's sentences. But even with just a look, you know, I can look at her across the room and she knows, go help her. Or <laughs> um, <laughs> cut that. Yeah. Or, um, you know, I need the thing. Or she knows what the thing, the daily bomb, yeah. the whatever. Um, and same thing, you know, mm -hmm. I know what she's going to want to have in her hand when she's talking. And so I can be that support person that can... You know, work yeah. the room, make sure she has what she needs and take care of, you know, people that have questions. And and I think it is hard because even though you're going to have two assistants out yeah. there helping you, mm -hmm. um, they're not your mother. I know, I know right? <laughs> so we'll see. I do have, they are great machine embroiders. Yeah, they I think it'll embroider be all the time. I think it'll be fabulous. I think it'll be mm -hmm. fun. Um, I think so too. So we'll Jeannie see. is going to help. And Jeannie is um, a retired, was it kindergarten teacher or first grade? For, uh, first grade, elementary. First grade. So, yeah. So, so she'll be good. She'll, she'll be able to command She's the got role. the patience. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm raising my hand. I know. I'm raising my hand. <laughs> yeah. We're going to go with some guide rules before we get yeah. started. Um, yes. So, yeah, it'll be, I think it'll be a lot of fun. It also, though, is one of the larger ones. So, we've been doing yeah. embro machine embroidery retreats for a couple years. I even used to have two because we had so many people interested. Because I had always cut the retreats down to, like, 13-ish, somewhere mm -hmm. in there, because it was easier to manage. One, the amount of machines, the amount of noise, um, it was a whole lot easier. We are at 17. We backed it. Yeah, we did. So, yeah. And it just kind of, I don't know how it actually happened, but I mean, it's not, I'm not worried really about it. No. Um, I'm hoping that the, you know, newbies who are coming to learn and mm -hmm. learn their machine get a lot out of it as well as my more seasoned people don't feel like they just got ignored the whole time. Um, cause I do think that with our projects, everyone will finish their project. Yeah. Um, and hopefully learn something new. So I think, I think it'll be good and we'll do some pictures. We'll, we'll, I think it's fun for you guys to kind of see and have the inspiration and see what's going on. So we'll, we'll have, we'll show you. I'll take the camera it's out there good. and yeah. we'll show you guys. And then what we're going to do is, so we're, we'll do the box opening tonight. Um, we did have a few people ar arrived early that got here, uh, mm -hmm. yesterday. Some even got here Monday and then, um, uh, everybody else is going to be arriving tonight and then we'll do the box opening on Sunday. I suppose we'll do it the yeah. way we've done before and see who wants to come in and yeah. be a part of that. So that's always kind of fun. I think they like that. They like to see what's going on. But then what we're going to do is next Wednesday when we do our Fabra Chat, we're going to do that out at the event center because we are going to have a staff sewing day uh, oh, because yeah. we need to be working on our bras. Yeah. So um, uh, some of us are well underway and working on it, and some of us are in panic mode because we've only got three weeks Can you left. guess who's in uh, panic mode? Yes. Oh, yeah. I no. am. I have I, a whole lot of notes, mm -hmm. you know, of what I think I want mm -hmm. to do, um, but I, don't, I haven't bought a bra yet. I have a box of bras that was uh, donated last year, so I'm going to put everything out on the table, and that'll yeah, help with inspiration. Yeah. yeah. My problem is I end up with too many things in my head. Yeah. And, and so you can see, because if you guys opened up your um, newsletter that was sent, yeah. you saw um, four pictures of the bras from last year, and you can see how um, 
different they how are. different they are and how much you know work is in there mm -hmm. um between tracy's that was the steampunk one i think i put my big bejeweled pink one in there with mm -hmm. all the fringe um britney did britney the, blue the yeah one. so and then i did they the are quite um you know labor intensive because we think mm -hmm. about it you know mm -hmm. and you know we've been thinking about it for an entire year and now mm -hmm. it's like oh hey guess what it's september mm -hmm. <laughs> So yeah, I'm excited about that. I think you guys will have fun too. Uh, yeah, I think it'll be fun. You can kind of see what we're doing. We'll still do our little fabric chat and we'll kind of, you know, show you what's going on and, and then remind you because then the bra auction is going to be October 1st. It's yep. Saturday at four o'clock. We're going to do it live and we're going to do it here at the shop. Um, so everybody's going to be here. And mm -hmm. so that'll be really, really fun. And we have, um, we have a couple of creators who There's are sending a, us who some are stuff. sending some stuff. So I Donna wait. Strunz, so people, um, so the gal, I can't think of her name. What's the gal's name from, um, oh, not so creative. Oh gosh. Who's the one that did the quilt class? The, um, the, um, the crumb cake. Oh, um, Mm. Doggone it. I'm so terrible with I feel these. like if you didn't say so creative, I would have gotten it. The Sewing Channel. Sewing Channel. That's it. The Sewing Channel. So the Sewing Channel, um, and there's a couple of others. We've sent out some um, some invitations because I, there's a couple of different YouTube creators that uh, watch us that comment and we comment back and, and I follow them and watch them. And mm -hmm. so it might be kind of a fun, we, we talk about doing some collaborative things and this would be a perfect opportunity to uh, feature somebody else who does a YouTube channel, yeah. who teaches things and you can kind of get to know them. So we're anxious for that. Um, those people have to get their quilts to us a little bit early so we know uh, so they've arrived in mm -hmm. time and then the other thing is if you're if you're if you want to make a quilt a uh, bra and send the bra to us for mm -hmm. us to auction off we absolutely will accept it and you can put on there who you want us to raise money, money for, for. Mm -hmm. um, or if you just have someone that is in dire need of you know some funds and again uh, the newsletter yeah. we sort of review all of that that it's it's really just um, for whatever it is that you need whatever your uh, deductible doesn't pay for for travel for time off work mm -hmm. for prosthetics for a wig for you know whatever it is that you need um, mm -hmm. that's the whole idea it's no questions asked you're just gonna get a check yeah. And uh, you can spend it however you want to. You don't have to fill out any forms. You don't have to go down to an office. You don't even it's have to tell like that. that friend. Because we all have yeah. that friend it that's not going to ask, it's just doesn't a... want it, but they would be gracious to yeah. take it and do something fun with it. And so. we send, um, when we send the money, we send a nice card and a picture, a poster that says, this is what happened and your friend yeah. honored you and we raised this money for you. And I looked it up because I couldn't remember, I think in the newsletter, when we were doing the newsletter, I couldn't remember. Um, it was 9870 dollars is what we raised last year wow yeah we did good that's fabulous yeah we did good and so yeah. and 100 percent of that nine thousand eight hundred and seventy dollars went to those recipients yeah. um we didn't keep any kind of an administrative fee at all so um mm -hmm. anyway so it's just a fun, fun thing so um you can participate however you'd like to if you have somebody you want to nominate email me um, if you want to decorate a bra and get it to us, uh, we would love that. Uh, we'll auction that thing off. And um, if you have a recipient, let us know, or we'll pick somebody. Or mm -hmm. if you have a recipient, um, let us know that. And watch. Just come and hang out and support us and Super cool. bid on a bra. Yeah. Um, and then somebody else asked, too, well, what are we supposed to do with the bras? We don't care what you do with them. Whatever you want. <laughs> I have mine on where... a on a bust uh, in my closet, mm -hmm. and it hangs on the wall. Yeah, because some of the them are um, definitely art work that's yeah. all solid and can hang. Yeah. Mine was totally wearable, totally wearable. You could totally flash that baby down the beach. Yeah. Um, some of them are just fun and quirky that maybe la makes you laugh. Yeah. That you can put in your closet just to make you smile every day. Yeah. Some of it, like yours, you could have hung in your office, in your cubicle, yeah. donate it to your local breast um, image, imagery, imagery um, whatever, yeah. waiting Clinic. room, just to make it, you know, a little yeah. less sterile looking, you know, put yeah. some life in there. So there's a lot of things that you can do with it and you, you know, 
you can also purchase it and have it and you know I'm gonna give this to my friend who's going yeah. you know to college and is super yeah. girly and you can turn it into anything yeah you can do anything with it we don't we don't care what you do with it no, no judgment wear it or it's funny that um, you can wear anything now don't you, you think yeah it's bizarre to me that you, you think that anything. you would not think our clothes <laughs> <I know. laughs> Floss. that people can wear yeah not me people but <laughs> people people so anyway so yeah, that's super right. exciting. So, so yeah. yeah, so that's what's October happening. October 1st, this, yeah. 4 p.m. Uh, yeah. Pacific time. So mark your calendar, set your timers. Mm -hmm. And it'll be live. And even if you just want to come and hang out and laugh with us, it, we'll have a good time. Yeah. Everyone will be here. So, all right, let's see. So um, the other thing I was going to mention, I, I feel like I needed to mention this. So um, the, um, the couple that arrived on Monday night, um, Oh, Sunday night. When did they get here? They drove up from Louisiana, mm -hmm. uh, Ben and Lori, and uh, they were just going to kind of take their time coming up, um, and they wanted to stop and see um, they stopped and Mount, stopped Rushmore. Mount Rushmore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think maybe Yellowstone, so they stopped a few places. But anyway, so they came up the back way, came into uh, um Spokane, and then they took Highway 28, oh, okay. Highway 2 yeah. and 28 back, which is always the way that I tell people, if you it's have the time, place. take the back way back instead of I-90. Um, anyway, so they came that way. Uh, actually, his GPS told him to come that way. Oh, good. Which was nice. It is actually closer. People don't think that because it's, I mean, it is a really nice highway. Anyway, they said they've never seen anything. All of that driving from Louisiana uh -huh. to here, they didn't see anything like like what we have here. Oh, that I believe just it. I think we really rolling, do. Rolling, rolling, rolling hills mm -hmm. for and for as far as you can see. So not flat. Yeah. You know, corn. We're or definitely whatever. textured. It's <laughs> yes, rolling hills. It's all yeah. dry land wheat. There's canola out there. Um, sunflowers out there yeah. for as far as you can see. And yeah. um, they were pretty amazed because they thought, oh, oh, cool. oh well, one more hill. Oh, my gosh, there's more. Yeah. One more hill. Oh, my. And then you'd see, oh, here's a little house and here's yeah. a house and mm -hmm. here's a house. So there's a tractor working. Yeah. And it's yeah. funny because um, Marge lives out there. And I said, oh, you drove right by Marge's house. And um, we Marge, need to like paint a big old quilt block on her barn or something. Yeah. People know Marge is Marge. here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, um, Marge hates it when. Uh, uh, when I say, when anybody says it, uh, when anybody says she lives in the middle of nowhere. Um, she does. No, it is not nowhere. She mi she lives in the middle of somewhere. That's true. She lives out in the middle of a field, <laughs> but it is not nowhere. nowhere. She has phone service. Beautiful. <laughs> God's country. And, pretty. um, yeah, it really yeah. is pretty. And then, um, uh, Cheryl and Patty, two sisters from Colorado and Wyoming, they came uh, almost the same way. Yeah. But they took Highway 2 and went oh, up and then came down, down and stopped at Dry too. Falls. Another beautiful. Oh, really and they said the drive. same thing. It is the most beautiful thing. We've never seen yeah. anything like it. And it's like, yeah. And yet they came it's from two It's definitely a distracting we, drive, I think. Yeah. We do it. live in an absolutely beautiful area. Mm -hmm. And I think that oftentimes a lot of people that are here, uh, myself included, I think we take it for granted that we have such a beautiful yeah. area. So, And that's why we're excited always to show people. So when people do come, we always do a few little excursions just to um, show people what's here. And that's why, too, when we do the Columbia River tour yeah, and um, coming here uh, before then just to be able and to And driving see. down, you know, we have the bus that loads up yeah. here and we drive to um, Clarkston. Clarkston to get on the boat. Mm -hmm. And that drive alone is gorgeous. Yeah, it is. So yeah. it's cool. Yeah, Pretty I area. do think that we live in a really pretty place. Yeah. Pretty, pretty area. And what's really fun is that the um, the couple from Louisiana, one of our favorite places, and I know we've said this multiple times, is um, um, New Orleans. Love, love, love New Orleans. Mostly love, I mean, I love New Orleans for many, many, many reasons, but mostly uh, the food. The reason for tight pants. The food. Yeah. <laughs> The food, yeah, and so we were talking about that, and uh, she and I said, you know, I don't understand why somebody has never moved up here, and hasn't just opened a southern cooking. Well, restaurant. I wonder if it's the supplies. Like, who would have thought the flour was so different until 
you know, Jan enlightened Jan us. Jan Kalanick mailed me some flour, and mm -hmm. it is totally different. Southern flour, you don't have to use the baking soda, you don't have to use anything else in it. They it's the whole two ingredients in it. for the, yeah. And I think it is true that that supply is one thing, but it's funny because, um, Lori, this is, I don't know if I told you this, so Lori last night was making gumbo in her, Oh, I know, in her little bungalow. She's, oh yeah, I'm going to go to the store because I'm going to make gumbo. It's like, what? what? <laughs> All right, I invited, how did you make it? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you doing in there? And I, you know, didn't want to be like all creepy or anything, but it's like, wait, what? <laughs> Can I come smell? I know. So then, uh, and she was just so casual about it. She says, "Oh yeah, um, I browned my sausage," and I told my husband not to be picking at it, not to be eating it. It's like you have browned sausage <laughs> right in there, ready for your. So, and then I said to her, I did say, "Well, um, you are not going to find okra." Okra is not a thing super, um, yeah. here in central Washington. And she said, oh, that's okay. She doesn't put it in there anyway, which is good because okra is super weird. I mean, mm -hmm. I know that it's, I think that literally it's what gumbo means is yeah. okra. And so people put that in there. But I love gumbo, but for some reason the okra was a little, yeah. was um, strange. So she doesn't put that in there. But anyway, I, I believe she made it anyway. I did not taste it or smell <laughs> it or see it, but... But that's okay. But but what she was saying is she was saying that um, she her impression mm -hmm. is that us up in the Pacific Northwest um, that we are such health conscious eaters. Oh no, no, <laughs> no. Because <laughs> she said, well, she says we, we don't think that you guys would eat like that. It's like oh, we would. Totally well, that's because like the that. West Coast, the other side of the mountains. That's all you hear about. Is well, Seattleites and all of them, and maybe, being but, super healthy and starting all of these, you know, new special only plant based things, and that's great. But on our side, um, we're all about cows, cream, cheese, cream, mobile. butter, <laughs> butter. <No. laughs> Yeah, cream sauces. Well, and Hollywood's exactly on our right. side of the world, so maybe they just assume it stretches all the way up. But yeah, yeah, it's true. It's right, it, and that's what I said to her. I said, "Oh no, 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 no." We eat all of that stuff. And actually, I think that over on the other side, I think they eat like that too. I right. think a lot of people, tr I try to eat, I, I like to eat healthy, but I don't think I could eat healthy every meal. Yeah. Which is interesting because guess what day it is? It's something like that. <laughs> you look disgusted. I do, I look disgusted. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's something like that. It's and we new. would love, I mean, I think in our area for sure, something new. Um, we have, because um, they were coming in late later on Sunday and I had told them, I was like, hey, mm -hmm. pick somewhere to eat before you get to town because Soap Lake won't have anything open. Mm -mm. Efreda is fast food, fast food or Mexican. Um, Moses Lake probably might have more options. Mm -hmm. They have probably more fine dining. But, you know, and that's the hard part is mm -hmm. our food is very the same. Yeah, we have a lot of Mexican food. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's the other funny thing that we were talking about is that down in the south, you guys have a lot of, uh, I think you guys call it Tex-Mex. Oh. And because when we've had Mexican food down there, very, very, it's very, very different. different from ours. Up here, I would say that we have authentic Mexican yeah. food because we've been to Mexico, I don't know how many times, right. eight, nine times. And I feel like the and really good we street tacos, down there, we have that here. here. Yeah, mm -hmm. our um, enchiladas are definitely our tacos are all of that kind of yeah. stuff. It, tostadas, the homemade um, in our restaurants you can get the homemade um, tortillas. Yeah. Um, but we, I, I think that it's very authentic Mexican food. I think so. And too. so, and there's a lot of it. I don't know why we eat so much of it up here, but you're, um, you're not going to find southern cooking. No. You're not going to find. Um, here, we don't have a lot of Asian food. Somebody else was saying, I think from Portland, that everything they have down there is Thai food. Really? Thai, Thai food? Thai food, Thai food. No Mexican restaurants, but everything. They have like eight Thai food restaurants in their neighborhood. And I thought, well, wow. We would take one. Well, let's trade you. Let's trade one. I'll trade right? you one for one. That was one of our favorite places when Jared came to visit me in Seattle as we went to a Thai restaurant. A Thai restaurant. Mm -hmm. You guys had that Indian restaurant, too, that was Yeah, really that was really good. We can always decide, really depending good. on how many people are in one, that we would decide. Mm hmm Really good. It's just nice to have options, yes. I think. I think mm -hmm. options are good. And sometimes you just feel like something naughty, and sometimes you don't. And that yeah. brings us to... Today's National Day. It's National Food is Medicine Day. 
and it says, well, learn about the risks of poor nutrition and the barriers <laughs> to nutritious eating. So, um, and I did click on it to read. It's like, what? what are you? So, and it is true that, you know, we certainly understand What you that. put in is what you get out. Yeah, we, you are what you eat. We yeah. understand all of that. I have said that before, that I have the body I deserve. I understand why my pants are tight. <laughs> I deserve that. It all makes sense. And I do know that when I am consuming too much sugar, mm -hmm. I am achy. Um, I understand all of those things um, and mm -hmm. also that um, to find, you know, those nutritious things to eat that will sustain your body and that's what today is and I am a little bummed about it because Joey is arriving and Joey is our chef and but she does cook really good though. She does do good stuff. She, she does true. healthy stuff so. Eh. Mixed in with those I was bits, just, but. I was just, yeah, thinking so much about <laughs> beignets. <laughs> That extra dose of powdered sugar. Ready to just <laughs> meet a friend in New Orleans for a a weekend of beignet eating. <laughs> Those things, man. Um, it's also National Eat a Hoagie Day. Oh, I'm not a hoagie eater so much. Are I'm not you? A, mm, no, it's I'm not so a fan. much bread. But you know what's funny? Uh, Robert and Brittany always talk about. We had this fabulous pizza place growing up called Zach's in oh. Quincy. Um, best pizza, best everything. It was super sad when they closed it, and they were just ready to retire. And I think there might have been a family thing going on, but super sad. And they all talk about Zach's hot hoagie, how they just miss it, and still to this day crave it. Mm -hmm. And it's probably been closed for what? 15, oh, long time. Probably 20 years? Yeah. So, yeah. What was on their hot hoagie? I don't know. They just keep saying, I don't know. It was just this, meat, and cheese. and cheese. She had the special sauce. The special sauce. It's a special sauce. It's all about that special sauce. That special but yes, sauce. they talk about it all. The, just at like Wyatt's birthday, we were playing cornhole or something, and somehow the hot hoagie came up. Hmm. We were talking about it all over again. The hot hoagie. Exactly. See, I'm hot not hoagie. much of a hoagie fan because of the bread to Get meat in, ratio. Yeah. I, I don't, I like bread. I'm a bread eater, but I don't like more bread than yeah. stuff. And for me, I don't enjoy the whole soggy bread bit. No. Like I'm okay with like a French dip or dipping it into something. And then, mm -hmm. I mean, that's good, but sitting in that special sauce and getting a little old. See, me too. Yeah. It's yeah. I'm not me. a, yeah, so, yeah, not a hoagie, not a hoagie fan so much, yeah. really. In fact, when we go to Subway, and build it. Um, I like that flatbread. Flatbread. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anyway. Anyway, it's National Eat a Hoagie Day. And that, yeah. you know, that's the other thing too, is there's this thing that I discovered. I don't remember wh who I heard it from, but it's a spice called gunpowder. Do you know about that? Uh-uh. Mm. See. Super spicy? I'm a, yeah. It's called gunpowder. And apparently it also is a Southern cooking thing, I guess. Somewhere down in the South, somebody had started this. And now um, that original company is no longer in business. And it has a, it's like a, a yellow uh, uh, label, uh, kind of, it's that color, um, a yellow label and it has a red um, state of Texas on it hmm. is what's on it. Um, but, but that company is no longer in business, but they called it, um, so you can get the original gunpowder. And what it is, is it's ground up jalapenos. Oh, well, I mean, I do that. Right, right, because I put crushed red pepper flake in everything, yeah, and so this gunpowder, I thought, oh, that's really good. It is really, is really, really good? good, yeah, it's really and really I wonder because a some. lot of these recipes I'm watching on like you know TikTok or Facebook, whatever they always ask they always say, "Oh, and I have some um." You know, onion powder and some garlic powder and some slap your mama. And it's like, wait, what was slap your mama? Slap your mama, slap your mama yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know what that means. Yeah. Is that like salt, yeah. pepper, and something else? Yeah. So, yeah, that yeah. must be a. I think people, thing too. everybody has like that special seasoning that you put on everything. Everything. Yeah, yeah. That you put, you know, I mean, I know. Um, Paulina has one uh -huh. that she mixes up and and I did that for a while where I would put the things that I put in everything salt pepper yep. onion powder garlic um, powder all of those things but um, but they have those where it's like a special blend and huh. um, so I think a lot of I think slap your mama I, I think I do know exactly <laughs> what that is uh, I think I need some because everybody puts it in there it's like ah, I need some of it's that it's hot it's spicy and, and I'm okay with spicy thing. I am too yeah. in fact I am I like it on the spicy side yeah. I think and my um, kids are like that too yeah 
um, they and like, I like something little... that is only seasoned with salt and pepper right. and, and even and powder. Jordan and Brittany's kids they like it yeah. flavorful yeah. I mean yeah. they're not someone who just wants you know plain Jane they want a little yeah. something in there yeah yeah yeah, so maybe that hot and spicy hoagie, whatever, maybe it's got, you know, maybe we need to put both Slap Your Mama and uh, <laughs> gunpowder gun on it. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's also, thank gosh, because just when you thought it was going to be a horrible day. <laughs> <laughs> All about lettuce and stuff. It's cream-filled donut day. Ah. Woo! Hold it out of the hat at the last minute. <laughs> thank goodness, because I can loosen a button. <laughs> so... See, and for me, I don't like anything filled I'm in not the donut. I'm not either. I'm not. <laughs> I don't want all of a sudden something to I burst. I don't either. I Robert know. likes a good jelly filled or cream. No. Uh, a Bismarck. Filled. Is that what they call him? <clears throat> oh, yeah. Something like that. I know. I, I yeah. I, I, my favorite donut is just a plain glazed. Oh. Plain. I'm a maple bar. You're a maple bar? Mm -hmm. With a I, chocolate I'll eat a maple though. bar. I won't, I won't walk away from one. And I don't mind, <laughs> I don't mind chocolate glazed, but, um, plain glazed is my favorite. Yeah. Warm. Krispy Kreme. Mm hmm I don't, I wonder if they have Krispy Kremes. You guys have, um, Dunkin' Donuts, I think, down south. Dunkin' Donuts? Mm. They're They're probably too, the but, yeah, probably. Um, I don't like apple fritters. Do you like apple fritters? No. And I don't know why. I mean, the taste isn't bad, but I don't think everyone makes them the same, depending on if, like, yeah. Safeway makes it versus Aiken makes it versus whatever. Um, I feel like the apple is important, whether it has a little bit of crunch to it, because if it's too soft, it's like you, I don't even know. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, for me, I don't want to be, if I'm going to eat a donut, I'm going to enjoy the entire thing. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have to, you know, not eat all of it. And... <laughs> Bite. <laughs> I'll do the whole thing. I'm gonna then change my mind. I want a lot. <laughs> well, see, that was the other conversation we were having last night was something called fried pies. Fried pies. Fried pies. They were talking about we were having this southern cooking discussion, and um, she was talking about fried pies. It's like, what is a fried pie? I've never had a fried pie. So again, Jan, add this to your list um, of <laughs> things we're going to eat. But um, she said that it's really literally just what it sounds like. So you just make a little pie and it's pie crust and you put whatever you're filling. And she uh -huh. said typically she does apple pie yeah, and then closes it. And she has some sort of a special thing. So they make it like round. Okay. And it's about the hand, size of your hand. And you fry it. Do you deep fry a you pie? You deep fry a pie. And then you take it out. I know. I want to try it. Because I and have. You sprinkle it, of course, with, with powdered, powdered sugar. sugar. Of course you do. Duh. I'm going to try it. I've got some pie crust in the refrigerator. I've got mm. some homemade apple pie <gasps> filling. And I even have some that's diced really, really small, just you, in case I made little turnovers. You have to bring me one. Okay, I'm going to make some. I should be yeah. home today in a little Because she said time. it was like, yeah, she says, it's like, what? She, it was like it was no big deal. And, you know. Hardly Fried even with just it's yeah just what you would just I'm gonna just try. What it sounds like and I've got these little pie. like um because you know I'm a mom of a oh yeah yeah I, and we've been in there for you know two weeks and mm -hmm. I cut out his sandwiches yes. into I've got a circle I've got a heart I've got a teddy bear mm -hmm. and they they crimp it I, was, I would think it would have to be yeah it's like your pampered your, chef one but yeah. it's you know cheap Amazon let's see if he likes it but he does he changes up his mm -hmm. mind every day mm -hmm. so, yeah all right we'll make fried pies. Fried pies. I think you're probably going to want to crimp the edges a pretty little, well yeah. so that it doesn't um, burst. Mm -hmm. I'll have a huge mess. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try Fried pies. Fried That's pies. Thing. Maybe there's a fried pie day. It's not today. <laughs> it's eat good or donuts. It's eat good. <laughs> you, you Food choose. is medicine. Yes, it is. Yes. We know. We know. And... You know, never met a carrot I didn't like. <laughs> I think carrots are new. Or, or, or spinach. Or I like them all. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't know if a carrot is I know, I know, I know. <laughs> what? You want them potatoes. Potatoes. <laughs> I love potatoes. <laughs> you don't even have to find no, no, them. No, no, no. I'll time. think of something good that I like. <laughs> all right. I know. Right now, it's all about tomatoes. I've just got mm, lots of yeah. tomatoes. And so... Um, I think I need to do something with that. And my my poor little um, uh, uh, cucumber plant. I almost ripped it up because I thought, oh, it's really done. But there's two little babies cooking on there. So I'm going to 
eke out. Mm-hmm. Um, it, you might have a couple, a couple good more. weeks yeah. out of it. Yeah. And then we walked down. Um, it was funny when uh, Cheryl and Patty got there. They wanted to see the, or Lori, I'm not sure who wanted to, somebody wanted to see the strawberry garden. <laughs> and and see um, how easy it was to steal. And they go, oh, yeah, you could totally just reach your hand through there. And I said, yeah, I know. So we picked some and we ate them and everything was fine. Well, then last night it was like 20 minutes to 6 and um, the girls were hungry. And so I said, well, let's just dash over real fast because Mom's Deli, which is this Ukrainian food, oh, yeah. is just kitty corner from us. So um, we decided to walk. And so we, you know, dashed over there really quick, got a kind of an assortment of things and then came back and as we walked by on the sidewalk it is a it is a whole different view I totally get it because when you're standing on my grass and you're looking it's like you have to dig through yeah yeah and maybe you can there's a whole you can see all of them oh yeah you can oh. I mean, I, of course you would pick them oh. and so you walk by and you can see that the it's almost like the leaves are are facing the east and so you can see these great big red berries oh. and, and they are so the grass really is green on the other side of your fence yeah it really is and yeah. so it made sense we were all standing there going oh, i get it i get that pick it <laughs> pick it so anyway so i need to go back and harvest from that the side. other side yeah mm. yeah so it was kind of funny so um anyway so it's also uh national coloring day which is so good yes yeah love that that's really good. And also, this is funny, um, it's also National Gobstopper Day. Can you buy gobstoppers anymore? I don't know. I hope not because, oh my gosh, <laughs> not a fan. Gobstopper, you know, yeah. Yeah. Because no one, you guys always wanted them and they were what? Such this the big. color up. And you lick it. <laughs> And then you put them beside your bed, and then you'd lick it again. Yeah. And then, you know, I'd find it stuck to the, I don't know, the coffee table. or <laughs> the dog. <laughs> They're grossest to yeah. Like, oh my gosh, why? Yeah. I would give my kids any of that. No, don't yeah. even start it. And for me, I worry a little bit about the whole choking thing, because if they think it's like, okay, I'm done with it, I'm just going to swallow it. No, you're not. You it's can't not swallow. going anywhere. And you can't bite and it. And you can't bite it, and I don't want their teeth to, you know, hurt yeah. their teeth. And I mean, it's like they do sugar and that whole thing. So Who even about that, two but... stoppers? Not a dentist. No. Or a mother. <laughs> or a mom. I know, let's look at it. Was a naughty it. uncle. I, know, naughty uncle. On it. I know, I'm <laughs> sure. Naughty uncle, naughty uncle candy. That's exactly yeah. what it is. Because, yeah, we're just going to lick on it a little bit now and a little bit later and a little yeah. bit later. Stupidest thing I've ever said. <laughs> yeah. No, absolutely not. Why are we celebrating this day? I'm just, I didn't even click on it. And their shared history with generation, generations mm-hmm. of children. Ew. Sticky. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Popularly known as jawbreakers, hard, normally round, delicious candy with layers and layers of sweetness. Okay, who wrote this? <laughs> no. Someone is really trying to sell it. No. Really this trying to sell it. This day is celebrated annually and people get to relax and enjoy everything related to gobstoppers. No. no. That's not my waist. No. no. No, absolutely. I even have hard time like when we go into Ace or to the hardware store, they always have those gumball machines, you know, yeah. for a core. You can get even a, those gumballs are, are so freaking messy because they're too big for the tiny little mouth, and so you got it's red. Just uh, like, oh my god, spit it out! Yeah, just spit it. Out. <laughs> Bad and choice. They do finally start chewing. <laughs> it's only sweet for like thirty seconds, and then they're done. Can I get another one? No, no, you can't. It's for all over your quarter. face. No. For a quarter, I'll go get you a little dum dum on a stick. That's right. That. That's right. <laughs> Candy on a stick that yeah. then can be thrown away. That's oh, exactly right. Funny. All right. I suppose okay. that's probably it. Let's see. Um, quilt behind us. Uh, Navajo Rose. Um, so Columbia River Cruise in next October. This is what we're going to be what doing. We're making. It's also one of our top selling patterns mm-hmm. for forever. Mm-hmm. It's one of Mom's first patterns. Mm-hmm. So. Really fun, really fun to make. And this was just so different from what we had. When Rosalie was here when we were gone, um, she, she finished, finished this one. one. Yeah. So it's yeah. Stunning. It was the one that we used to use. So I um, I think we've talked about this before with different quilts that, you know, a class that 
we would redo. So we might have yeah. a Navajo Rose class and then two months later we would do it again and two months later we would do it again and, you yeah. know, kind of one of those revolving things. So I would always have a quilt that was in process. In process. This is how a partially pieced block. This is a full block. This is how you get the rows together. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, in six hours we'd have to do all of those steps so that you could go home and you'd know what to do. And um, so it was kind of nice because Rosalie was finishing up these things that are just older. Yeah. And so, and this is kind of fun because it has that dark background. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah I like it. I like it. Oh. Now we just have to quilt it. Yes. All right. Okay. Well, I think that we're all up to date and yeah. And then we'll see you uh, tonight for box opening. Bye. Thank you for watching our video. We invite you to leave a comment, hit the like button, or better yet, subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode. You can also visit our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or Pinterest pages, or find all of those things and our online store at fabricpatch.net.